they were like, yo, Rev, you can do the lyric video for this song, which was Marshall. I saw him waves. Let me make a wave. Correct, Marshall manager. Chair for linking me to do a video for Miss Lauren Hill. It linked me with ed an editing job for, for an artist named Monday Justice, a, a saxophone player. So Natty Royal is his name. Mm -hmm. And Snoop Dogg. Oh, the funny thing with Trevor Noah. And the year after that, I lend my bridges and in my car to do a show and they crash it. So my car was written off. It right off? Yeah, right off. Right off totally. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the South Central Podcast. I am your host, Ron Austin. And on today's episode, we are joined with Jamil Pelleran, also known as J Revolution. Give it up for JJ. Thank you for coming to the show, my G. Yeah, Ron, thanks for having me. Um, we have did with this set here, bro. It just, I, I feel right at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, I must we, admit. As you all can see, we are not much. My improved set. We are at the full time studio here today on the South Central podcast. My G, thank you very much. That's not a problem. Your man. facilities. That's not a problem at all. No, you can get out anytime. Pause. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a pause moment, dog. Now, for those who may not know, Jamil is a very, very accomplished filmmaker in his own right, being the head of the full time team, which encompasses shows such as the Something More show. We have four is law and a lot of other shows encompassing underneath the umbrella dream is the leader of our entire movement that have a lot of the social media influencers here with us like mr Bettel, something more who does many radio right show what you're doing right now especially bringing forth content in the caribbean right it could not be understated my g so thank you very much for coming on the show here today with me yeah man i appreciate that that's a hell of a intro there bro i, I get that one thank you bro Get yeah, that one. So yeah, talk to me around. What what do you want to know? Well, what so do you want to know? First of all, well, at least when we our initial start of conversations, when we started talking, you keep telling me about the career and the things that you do so far. So mm -hmm. I want to get into that in the interview, especially for young content creators who coming up who are looking yeah. to follow in your footsteps, who inspire daddy work. I wouldn't advise that at all. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see in what full time doing and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. So you want to start, like, how it is your start, where you went, where you grew up, what part of Trinidad are you from, you know? How how far you want to go back, boy, run, man? Let me start from, like, how it is you knew that you wanted to get into content creation on the whole. Okay, so well, first of all, content creation. I hate the term. <laughs> well, true. But no, no, no. Uh, not to, not to bag on it. I just I have my reasons, which will probably be revealed later on mm -hmm. but how i got into film is actually a funny story it was because of my uncle rest in peace he actually passed away this year um he was a bit of an enthusiast camera enthusiast himself i didn't mm -hmm. even know that and one day he bought a pretty big printer and he just got a camera with it an hp camera that he didn't really intend to use and right. he gave it to me at that time i didn't even have a computer but he gave me a camera with a, a, a little memory card and i just used to use it take videos snap pictures again you have a toy you're using it and one day when i did actually get access to a computer i found <laughs> windows movie maker so i said oh this is cool i decided to play with it right and i went to the beach with some of my friends and w my best friend at the time almost drowned like you know this is not in a oh kind of almost drowned. no we were all out into the water my friends were literally saying help I ended up pulling two in because uh, I was the tallest and I could swim. But my friend was all the way out by the time I spin around. The lifeguards actually had to come and get him. It was that bad. And we joked about it after because I guess that's just how men deal with <laughs> things. We joke. True. And I made a, a mini documentary about it. <laughs> the fact that about we your friend drunk. almost drowned. Yeah, about your friend almost drowned. Like we had interviews and all kind of nonsense and they really liked it. Like live reporters at the scene. Yeah, that not, not, be cool. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, let me let me do. Let's. I was completely amateur, so let me not try to make it sound like it was a big deal. But in my head, I wanted to do a documentary, so we did that because, funny enough, even with the camera, I did interviews before we went to the beach, so I kind of knew that I wanted to do something, but I didn't think it would end this way, right? And I edited it, and my friend. It's, it's the reaction of my friends that made me feel good about the creation that. That was the catalyst for me doing film, like wanting to to film. And then I did another sketch with another set of my friends about us looking for a bamboo patch. And I just kept doing this over and over. And then one day, the professional side of things comes into play when 
another funny story. One of my friends, he he, he had this love interest for lack of a better term, but <laughs> she had a man and a child. <laughs> he swear he wanted to get through still, and he was like, "Yo, bro, I really like the videos you do with you know your friends and them." come and do a real good birthday video for this girl boy, you know, I really like she and thing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she actually paid us for it now. Right. Then he asked me to come out wedding and it snowballed into, into me something. actually thinking to myself, well, I could actually pursue this because again, the reactions I got from people, oh, this is real good. This is more than I expected, et cetera, et cetera. Truly solidified. It's a different kind of joy, you know? See, get what I had in here. The admiration for new people, yeah, though. But not just the admiration, the... The fact that my imagination, the things that are in my head, because mm -hmm. again, these these images I see clearly in my head, and the fact that I could kind of make it real through yeah. through film, plus the praise from my friends really was like, okay, I want to do this. So that that's that's that. Okay, and so from there, you know, started to get work with different jobs and people calling you to do that's the pause button. That's not what. That's definitely not what happened. <laughs> so what happened was yeah, is that the thing with the weddings, no. Naturally, the, the demand start, starts to grow mm -hmm. as technology gets better. So around that time is when the first digital SLRs started to come out. Of course, not many people had them. Not many, not many people were using them, mm -hmm. but they're there. Right. Right. And um, at that time, I thought that I needed some more qualifications, I guess, mm -hmm. which in the creative industry, I, I assure you, your portfolio is more, way more important True. than qualifications would ever be. But so I went to go, I went to SBCS, right. shout out SBCS, you all, you all helped in a big way. And I did a production course and they had a lot of equipment that they allowed students to use on a weekend to practice, right? But for some strange reason, none of these students were practicing. And I, and I don't get them wrong because I guess everybody had their eight to four job and they were like, well, after I done work eight to five, I go and Do make a I film can. like you crazy. Sure. So I talked to one of the guys renting equipment and he keeps telling me that nobody is taking equipment every weekend. And I say, what? So I could take every weekend and he say, yeah, but here what to do for me. Rent a camera for me too, because I want to do some photography jobs. And that was our deal. And I used SBCS equipment to film weddings. I pulling up to weddings with tr a three <laughs> cameras set up, <laughs> lights, all kind of thing, courtesy SBCS facts. And eventually I, I told them what was he seen. I, I told them. And they actually hired me to do a documentary for SBCS. You after. kidding me? No joke. Catch you shout out SBCS. Yeah, shout out SBCS. They 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 say they're for the students and they're really for the students. True. So we will give them a little at mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's way better. SBCS. That's way better than Sam's. Yeah. So that that was the that was the real snowball into into professionalism. It wasn't that I was really hustling, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Okay, and what made you decide to because so now you're going into profession, but make you decide to start to create well diving more into doing your own stuff i think that was probably always something i wanted to do mm -hmm. when i deep it right the first iteration so it talked about full-time in the beginning the first iteration of full-time was something called nova network right mm -hmm. and the ethos behind over network nova network was to give a voice to the voiceless because i always felt like a, a bit of an outcast based on like the thoughts i like in, in school i used to walk around with a book called Buddha's Little Instruction Book and I was deep into philosophy and and I, and I, I love to talk about outer space and metaphysical issues and existential problems. I, I love that. Even before I had labels for those topics, mm -hmm. that's that's what I like to talk about the most. And, you know, as we, we see, it's what we want to talk about, guilds, we want to talk about guilds and we want to talk about rap and, 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 and popular things and True. video games and things. I want to talk about what if the fact that we can't see light reaching us until it's way, way later that maybe we're staring into the past when we look up in the sky. That's kind of crazy. Like, that is my kind of conversation. So, all that is to say that I felt like an outcast, so I wanted to create a, a network that just did things in a manner where people felt like they were represented, for lack of a better term, right? Mm -hmm. So, that NOVA actually stood for Now Our Voices Are Heard. It was N-O-V-A-H. That's how it was spelled. Right. And I used to do this fake late night talk show with a rubber duck <laughs> the name of the rubber duck was axel rodriguez i mean where i get that name from but i think because one of them tonight show one of them shows had a, like a hispanic um guy who was in the corner and something i think it was jimmy kimmel one of them yeah a mustache was either jimmy kimmel from the man show or something right. this is before he was jimmy kimmel live i talk about way in the man show mm -hmm. somebody had a, 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 a an assistant like that so i wanted to have an assistant which was the rubber duck right right and i only named him axel because it was an axe duck 
from the brand Axe. They, 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 they had a yeah. They had a when they now launched their shower line. Yeah, they yeah. were promoting with a black rubber duck with horns, with Axe on it. So I named them Axel. That's the reason why I named them Axel. <laughs> anyway, Shout so out Axel, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> right. So Axel is my sister, and I was talking about how I thought music was so bad, as it was just hypersexual and. Uh, degrading women and stuff like that and I, and I did I was talking about rumping shop at the time mm-hmm. and whoa contribution to pay yeah. for them times because that's a big tune yeah it was a big tune but I don't, I don't care because I mean even if it's a big tune you could talk about it True. and again that's why I would feel like an outcast because when I would say these things like dog were you talking about or just broke out <laughs> right whatever so I think that that is really the catalyst because I, I wanted to be somebody who Challenge the status quo, and that's actually where I got the name J Revolution from. Because mm-hmm. one of my brethren literally said the sentence called J, like it's trying to start a revolution, boy. Ooh, yeah, that's how I nice shrink it. That you. was it. That was it. So, the, the, the need for my voice to be heard, regardless mm-hmm. of how weird or shunned it was, is the catalyst for me doing things. For and it creates a platform for you and your people. Yeah, well. So how did uh, that was intent. So how it evolved from Nova going up to full time as you say Nova as the catalyst for it? Well, um Nova did Nova actually um brought me into meeting um some people who were I would still say regardless of how regardless of the state of our relationship are still very important people mm-hmm. in my life. Um some fellas who I would have come together and invited me into their group called SRP. Mm-hmm. Right? Super and Peters. Which they, which evolved into super random people because it's just a group of fellas they believed in doing random things. Yeah. And um as much as we might have clashed in the beginning, because at that time I was transitioning from working in an uh, working in advertising to working for myself. And I and I really committed to even getting my own equipment at that time. So it was a big commitment. And the first time they invited me to meet them, I was like, fellas, me not time to play no games when I trying to make money from this. And they were kinda like, Who the hell this guy feel he is mm-hmm. in a type of way? But they still accepted me and brought me in and they realized that, okay, what he's saying makes sense. Like maybe we could really make careers out of this. And um, we started to do some parties that really set us apart from what was going on at the time. Mm-hmm. We did two parties that, that were really, um, well, three mm-hmm. that I would say propelled, f- challenged my abilities and propelled us into what we needed to be at the time, which was uh, we did a party when the BlackBerry Network went down. So I've given away my age, BlackBerry, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> when the BlackBerry Network went down, we did something called um, BBN, E-N-D, because you know it's BBM, so yeah. it's BBN, um, which was just a party on how people were so reliant on BBM when they could already just make a phone call now. Right. Ah, so it's as the, the evil conversa- conversationalist is the person who shut down the BBM who's forcing to make forcing people to make phone calls and actually talk to each other. That was the joke, right? And then the other sketch we did was something called Tribal Iceberg, where I was poking fun at how difficult it was to get a tribe ice ticket. Mm-hmm. We had a friend um, who literally got mad at, at one of my brethren, and she said, party means everything to me. I need this ticket because... She wanted a ticket, and at the time, on the night, it was like $1,000 for the ticket. People were selling tickets for $1,000, right? This is all-inclusive? No. Hell no, it's not all-inclusive. $1,000. $1,000 to try buys. Big up try buys. Yeah, it's big up try buys. That is, uh, that is culture shifting. Facts. And we made a party about that. And um, then the third party we followed up with was a party called the Academy for Party Efficiency, where we was training <laughs> girls to be efficient <laughs> at partying. So we was training your visa face. We was training... He was training um how how um how to how to leave your man properly, how to um do how to keep yourself in shape while taking body shots. It's had a it's had a girl named recruit two for one, because you know two for one drinks and that kind of stuff. So it was it's pretty funny. Recruit and two for one. Yeah, recruit two for one. You know yeah, recruit numbers. That was yeah. in cadets, right? So it's have a number. So two for one was a number. But the joke is she's a two for one now. Yeah. Two for one. She's special. That kind of thing. So we did these parties and big up to SRP and SRP. Our synergy, no pun intended, because I want to talk about synergy. Mm-hmm. No, we um, saw synergy was rebranding at the time, and they were talking about doing something called synergy connect. Right. And we went into synergy, and I we had no idea. I just I just told them fellas, I said, let me just go and have a meeting. We ha- I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Let me just go. And we scheduled the meeting with no plan. And I just, when we reached upstairs, I just blurted out an idea. I said, what if we did a game show where we went to bars and gave people's challenge, give people challenges 
for drinks, and we call it a boost, which <sighs> really had no real connection. Mm-hmm. How, wh- wh- mm. What's the name boost about? How was that? But we boosting up your line. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, it does. For real, that's all they show. Boom. Then they schedule an interview. F- and then we said, fellas, let me go and do a pilot. Yeah. Ain't? Because. So we did Proof this pilot. concept. Correct. So we did this pilot where we went on the avenue and our challenge was doubles with class where we made people eat doubles with a knife and fork. And it, it Blasphemy. W- yeah. It was uh, correct. Where was a hit? To the point where that's what they thought that's what the show was about. Just. Making people eat double with a knife and fork. And we went to the and we the, the, we sent Synergy the proof of concept and they 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 played it. It wasn't intended to be played. Don't get me wrong, we edited it mm-hmm. with the intent of they seeing exactly how we would do it, but it was never meant to be released. And they released it, and it, and it did well. And it was like, boy, JW, they call us on JW. Saying, I see all the men on the avenue giving people challenges and stuff. And we were like, yeah, well, we just did that, you know, to show what he, to what, show people what the show is about. Mm-hmm. And then he said, quote, that's good, that's good. So we can't wait for the first episode next week, Thursday. And we on the couch like, excuse? No, no, don't get me wrong. We played it. I played it off. I was like, yeah, absolutely. We, <laughs> we have way more challenges and da, 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 da. Brother, when we leave our studio, we were like, what are we going to do? With them fellas, my brethren, looked at me and said, Jamil, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And that weekend, we filmed. And for the next 12 weeks, mm-hmm. we filmed on our weekend and prepared the show for the next Thursday. It was... Jeez. Yes, it was, it was hellish. 12 weeks of that? 12 weeks of that. It was actually hellish. Yikes. But we did it. Shout out to them boys. Again, regardless of the state of our relationship now, mm-hmm. we did it. I appreciate them boys because they didn't, they didn't hesitate. For 12 weeks, that push, boy. Yeah. But... Again, we live where we live, and this country is how it is. True. And we got hella offers for sponsors. Mm-hmm. Coke, Unilever, Nestle, blah, blah, blah. And then when it was time to do season two, they said, yeah, go ahead and do season two. And then all of a sudden, this next show have games. And then this next show have challenges. And this next show have challenges. And we getting a small check. When I know three sponsors came to me to think. But then, again, when I deep it, if the deal is 60 40, then if we making 60% and the organization making 40% and all these sponsors come to us alone, then the organization, we will be making essentially more money with this deal and the organization. So they kind of cut us out now. And I'm sure other people have different interpretations of the story. I know what I remember and I know what happened to us, and that literally hurt my feelings though. And that kind of put a small damper in my 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 steam and my drive because yeah. it was like oh rather at least to create content mm-hmm. i was kind of more focused on i see this because i just try to make this a successful business rather than do this content creation because that like we it, it was real proud of us that what i'm saying is it, it was real pro- that people was real proud of us mm-hmm. and we did this and that it was the best show on the at the time and blah 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 and everybody coming up to read me i want to boost 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 when they see me blah 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 and then you literally undercut us and that was that hurt, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That hurt. That, that stopped any desire I had to do any content creation, as we call it today. I ain't gonna lie. You feel it kind of like by damping your creativity, in essence? Creativity, no. Not my creativity. You know. But my, my desire to... Dread, when I, when I compare myself to, to other creators, Trinidad is full of talent. Make no mistake. When you go back, rest in peace, Ellen Purnell and guys like this. You go back and watch some of these guys' videos who were working, what they were working with in the 90s. Bro, they made videos on par with what was going on in the States. Mm-hmm. It's real talk, right? If there are certain people down here who were making videos on par. That's what we need to reach to. Right? Go. No, but they were, they were on par. They mm-hmm. were as good, right? But I, they weren't really accessible. Like, I couldn't really meet these guys just, just, just so. Even no matter how much I probably tried. I just didn't know where to go, who to talk to, that kind of thing. You know, directors for videos were not the superstars. It was the artists themselves. You could come be the artists than find out who the director is. That's real talk, right? So when I looked, when I compared myself to, to artists, usually I would compare myself to people outside. That's just the reality, right? You, mm. you fed the, all these the things. You're looking, the at, you're looking at director X, you're looking at Hype Williams, and I would compare myself to these people. And it dampened my desire to do something for Trinidad and Tobago. That's mm-hmm. what it dampened. 
Because I believe in helping your country first. I believe in elevating your country first. But at that moment, I was like, this is the mentality of the island boy. Now, nah, forget this dog. Forget this. I go and do whatever I could do here and then, then, then go. I don't, care, I, I, I don't care about this place. This place do appreciate we do hard work or talent. I feel you. That's what, that's what I felt in that, in that moment. So how was it like, because you see, you mentioned transitioning from doing advertising to working on your own. Mm -hmm. What was that part of your li uh, life like? Because be that's a big transition to working TAFE. Yeah, well, the reason why I got a job in the first place is mm -hmm. because Bills. my gal at the time was six years older than I am. Right. And you can't be, you can't be broke and try to have a girl. It no, it don't work. It, it don't work. It don't mm -mm. work. They go turn around tell it. They go turn around tell it. You don't have to spend money. Just be creative. It don't, don't work. With the camera. It, it don't work. work. If you don't work, then it, it wouldn't work. Nope. You have right. to have that industry. Right. right. You have to have You have to have it coming in like the Sahara. Let it be real. Facts. You have to have it coming in like allergies. Let it be real. True. We don't all have... It don't always be coming in like allergies all the time, my G. Facts. Facts. Yes, your sinuses be clear. Mm-hmm. I need to be sneezing because you had a good I, I need to be sneezing. I need to right be right sneezing, true. right? True. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, shout out to her. She knows herself. Jana, she knows herself. That's not a real name, but if I play it and I say Jana, she knows she's up. <laughs> I, I rate her because Gal is a great motivator. I wanted to say the P the word, but I don't, I don't know about I don't know about your, I don't know I don't know what's your brand policies, but the P is the greatest motivator. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah, I went yeah, and got a walk dog. I literally lie on my resume to go and get a walk. Thankfully, one of my first mentors, shout out Clint Williams, mm -hmm. he recognized who it was and gave me a shot. Right. And um, what happened was fast forward. We ain't gonna talk about the negative experiences in the any place because I think it's our net positive still. And I think that out of respect for what certain individuals are going through, in retrospect, I'll just skip that, right? Right. But bottom line is, through doing my job, I won my company a very big contract. Mm -hmm. And I know I won the contract because the Minister of Energy at the time literally put in a note to his secretary, that young man is impressive. You should, ha um, what agency does he work for? And I remember my boss threw a party for me, gave me a nice pen and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know the value of the contract, but because I'm good with HR and all kinds of things, they, they told me that, mm -hmm. yeah, it was about 12 million, uh, part of the pie, because they, they, they trusted me with the information, right? And at the end of the month, I got my salary. No, this is not to make the agency sound bad because that is my job description. That is what I'm getting paid for. You was? Now they could have slide me some extra cash. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you just make them 12 M's though. No, you know, again, the contract is with 12 M's, me, no, but at the end of the day, they had to have come up with some M's. Yeah, my, yeah, they ain't, I know they didn't yeah, spend 11 up, million to execute, right? Boy, they had to come up with some M's. G? They come up with some M's. And at the end of the month, I get my salary. I hold no resentment for the fact that I got my salary, but it just made me think to myself that if I could get a fraction of this i will be good bro i finna beat up if you just make 12 m's off my work and i even slide me a little dust self yeah. well you see that's the thing remember you've been employed so yeah but how much of it is your work it's your work Yikes. for the agency true no but it's true. No, but buddy but it's true it is there are certain it people is. whose contributions probably makes big bank for their company and they don't become billionaires no they do not <laughs> that's what i'm saying and so. they still apply for vacation correct yeah that's hard boy but uh, but Again, that, 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 I mean, that's a, I don't want to say it's happenstance, but that, that's just my course of Experience. life, right? So when, I, when that happened, mm -hmm. coupled with everything else that was going on, I said, nah, I'm going to try my hand. And to the creators, look, to the young creators looking at this who want to do that, don't get me wrong. I made an impulsive decision. Let me be very clear about that. I made an impulsive decision. Mm -hmm. What I should have done was tell myself, okay, I'm going to leave yeah. and then stay for a year again mm -hmm. and a whole lot of money. And then leave. I literally just left because that's again is 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 defiance. We were talking about Aaron Yeager earlier. We go on again, but again, <laughs> is that defiant mindset? Because I, I have it. Yeah. And from the time I make a decision, I just be like, nah, I ten tools down, bro. I gone. Mm -hmm. No, I shouldn't have done that. In retrospect, but no regrets, right? So that was the transition. Okay. Now, aside from wait, aside from that, especially as we're talking about Trinidad, especially work in Trinidad, we need to talk about the fact that you also before transitioning to going, uh, was it before? Because you did work some of with you did work with some of the local artists. Correct. No, that, was, yeah, that was definitely after. That was definitely, yeah, after. definitely after. So yeah. what happened with your transition after leaving Trinidad to go 
and focus on an international clientele now what was that aspect of it like again i don't want to use what happenstance mm-hmm. but that is just the course it's not something that i could say if you do x y and z you will experience the same course mm-hmm. right um so shout out to artists like mr renzo and hashem mm-hmm. i hope they see this and i hope they understand that they have my gratitude for allowing me to use my style that was by no means popular right and experiment with their work you understand so um again going back to this going back to srp because srp is again is when we started to catapult that certain people who are ah, ziggy ranking as well he's in that right shout out ryan Gadari. they would have given me chances to do music videos from seeing tribal iceberg and all these parties that we did with no kind of funding or no push or no incentive we just did it and they gave me chances to do music videos right and um I started to do things like lyric videos and stuff like that. Some, some actually told me that when I did lyric videos for artists like Crystal Keen and Mr. Renzo, that it wasn't being done before. Mm-hmm. But shout out Attaclan because he did one of the first lyric videos in the country. But when it showed on Synergy, right. that's when it kind of gave a bit of a, a little eh for people to start doing lyric videos. And um, that it built up, it built up, it built up. And then one day... Um, when I, one of my brethren, when the EDM surge had happened, right. some of my brethren did a remix for, uh, my brethren at the time, did a remix for um, Remedy. Right? Marshall hey, Remedy. Remedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that and time is when like Life and Color and thing pop, pop correct, enough. That's oh, when it was that, that was the EDM, the, the, EDM, the EDM era as oh. era they would. And um, they, you know, after trying their hand, trying their hand, they did get a, to do a song for Marshall right and shout out to them they were like yo rev you could do the lyric video for this song mm. right which was marshall a song named waves let me make a wave i mean not the biggest song but it's it's what got us in the door and you know i did the lyric video and one of marshall's managers or one of his one, somebody in his management team mm-hmm. dana shagan shout out dana i name dropping like hell but shout out dana i just forgot for the sake of sh- expression gratitude yeah Dana said, yo, bro, you want to shoot this lyric video for Waves? I like your lyric videos, but here I want to do. You have a drone? Let me go to Tobago and film this. So we ended up staying in one of Marshall's houses in Tobago. And we did this big lyric video. And then, you know, after that, Destro caught wind of the lyric video style. Mm-hmm. And for s- they, t- one of my, again, shout out my brethren. He was working with Destro and he said, yo, look at this lyric video here. She said, hey, I could probably do one of this as well. But mm-hmm. how fast this man is work? And the show called me, and I remember it was the night when Trump got elected, dog. It was so funny. It was the day before. Right. It was when the uh, uh, American elections were going on. on. And I went and did this video for Desha, and she said, well, we need this video tomorrow, you know. And I did the lyric video overnight into the next day, watching Trump get elected. <laughs> watching Trump get elected us. Send a video for them, and they were impressed the fact that I could have turned Overnight? So yeah, overnight, overnight. Yikes. And they were, so I'm telling you, we started shooting probably 6 a.m. Yeah. And I sent it back 6 the next morning, right? Because they, they had to release it, right? Jeez, man. But so when they sign out tough editing is on Yeah, well, and, 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 and again, at that time, the tools that were available, mm-hmm. you had to be very, very creative. Yeah, boy. Right? It's not like now. Correct. It, ha- it, ha- a lot it more. had no autopod then. Yeah. <laughs> not even autopod, <laughs> but the amount of like templates and True. things like that. And, I mean, I don't mean I no credit card, so I can't go online and pay for no templates unless I pirate and stuff. So, mm. And again, I ain't had time to gather all the masses because it's overnight. It's what you have available at the time. Right. You have to and make it work. Big, big, big shout out to Deshran Bryan. They gave me an opportunity to roll with them for Carnival mm-hmm. because that's how, that's usually the type of turnover. Like, do you, you are showing the night mm-hmm. and you give them an edit at least by midday the next day. Now, granted, I was just, it's just a one minute edit. But again, I want to give people the best possible product that I can. Be so I am minute. cold sweating thinking to myself, I need to live up to Destra expectations because Destra, regardless of how maybe people in society and culture might want to turn their nose at Destra, I have huge respect yeah, for course. Destra. I also think she's very best. There's she's that. But... Brian is more, I have respect for Brian. Course, course, <laughs> so, course, course, course. But yeah, hopefully, again, you, you tag Desha on any clip. I have major respect for Desha. I find Desha have major classics. Yep. Desha should course. get some kind of icon award by now just for, for being Desha. So they gave me an opportunity to then travel with them. 
right? Because I performed well for them during Carnival and they gave me opportunity to travel, right? Now, I would say that in the grand scheme of things, I was actually going through a very, very painful period in life. While touring with Desha? Yeah, no, that tour actually mm. helped me in a major way to come out of that painful period. But really? I had just, like that time when I was still here doing lyric videos and stuff, mm. I, had a, I had sustained a major injury to my leg and I was walking with a stick, right? And I was going through a very traumatic relationship as well. I was making no money. I was, in a, I was a terrible gal with no money and, and uh, I couldn't walk properly. And the year after that, I lent my bridges and then my car to do a show and they crash it. So my car was written off. So I went through a very, very bad period. That it I right know. off? Yeah, right off. Right off totally. God. Damn. So I went through a very bad period that um, I, I, I'm, I probably am still to this day recovering from mm -hmm. mentally. I'm not going to lie. I had to power through because I, I didn't have the time to pause to deal with anything. And even when I was traveling with Destra, I was still going through that that period of that tragic relationship and the fact that I was still financially recovering from a lot of things, mm -hmm. you understand? Like the laptop I was using at the time was because the quote-unquote terrible girlfriend just literally just leave that with me, dog. Like, because she was, she was a very privileged young lady. She just literally leave that. Just left it. Yeah, you could go with her. And you just make and do it. And I, I just had to make do with it because I had no other choice now. And um, I actually dropped the ball in a major way on, with that opportunity. You know, what I'm saying? It, I mean, it is what it is. What do you mean? No, but so like I wanted to, like I was so caught up in me trying to be, now nah, boy, I need to be better. I need to be the best version of myself in this. Rather than recognizing that what I was doing already is good enough. And like I tried to do this big grandiose thing and it just didn't work out because I don't have the time and resources. I was just over, I was trying to hide the pain in trying to do the next best thing and the next best thing, the next best thing. Mm -hmm. And I failed to meet some deadlines and they were like, what's going on? You're good? And shout out to Destra and they, they asked me if I was okay. Good. And instead of being vulnerable, I was like, nah, good. I just had a little make up some dumb excuse and then I ended up just dropping the ball now. You know, what I'm saying? So, again, no regrets, but to, to, to the men especially listening to this, that vulnerability will save you. It goes save you. It, it has been tough though. It has been yeah, tough. Yeah, because we though. don't necessarily get the empathy that we deserve nah, we when don't. we be vulnerable. It's, it's true because men are not seen as emotional beings who whose feelings need protected. It's fact. Yeah. Men are seen as, Jed, your worth is tight away able to produce. Go down, gate. But I'm telling you, especially for the fellas, vulnerability will save you. Um, truth, your truth and your vulnerability will see. Yeah, Judd Vitis, and let's preach a lot about like truth and just see, just tell me truth and seeing where that journey will take yeah. you. And that is, you can't downplay how serious yeah. like that message is. Just yeah. tell the truth and see where it's taking life. Yeah. But, I would, so but I would say this, I don't know what plans the universe had for me at the time, mm -hmm. but that opportunity, what Desha and Brian presented to me, a hundred percent saved me from 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 probably being worse off really a hundred percent because they took me all over the world bro mm -hmm. like i reached germany with them john you know so i said so they we, every weekend i was on a plane and, and i mean there is us of course there's a certain element of ego stroking that when my peers would have seen that mm -hmm. hey you in the country this week we had a link <laughs> boy you sure you in the country <laughs> So there was a certain level of ego stroke in there. Yeah, yeah. And I remember one night, one of my good, good brethren, shout out Narada, he was, he was celebrating his birthday. Mm -hmm. And, well, the gigs is paying US. And I, I go in the club, US in hand, buy about two, three bottles of champagne, which is overpriced. Don't ever do that. <laughs> don't ever do that. But, we had the, but I had the means at the time. So, right. And I don't celebrate myself at all. Mm -hmm. So I kind of use my virgin birthday as a conduit to say, hey, I kind of doing well right now, boy. So I buy two, three bottles of champagne and pop it. I was like, bro, 15 years of friendship, bro. And we're going off and that kind of thing. And then some girl in the club was like, hey, so he has beer every weekend. I was like, nah, I'm a girl. I budget for this. Was on God, <laughs> that was my exact words. <laughs> I said, nah, I'm a girl. I budget for this. This ain't happening anytime soon. So. We go organize. And I gone off with the champagne and thing because, of course, real people popping up who you don't even know all of a sudden with champagne and that. But it was all good. It's yeah, all good. Whatever. I mean, uh, again, it's girls. We True. Ain't it's, it's no. The vibe's going on at the yeah, moment. Yeah, you ain't going to It was all good. So it's like, mm. <laughs> But yeah. And then that actually snowballed into Rook with Marshall. Cause I, I, I mean, I don't know. I can't remember that exact transition. But Marshall and him actually started to call me for a few things. Mm -hmm. Um... 
Shout out to Marshall Montana, by the way. Absolutely. The Suka King himself. Absolutely. 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 They, they, one thing about them, Dread, like, they made me feel respected. Really? I would, not, not to say that Sean M didn't. Make mm-hmm. no mistake. I ain't saying that. Yeah, yeah, but but. you would assume that the way people talk about Marshall being a perfectionist mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, when I, when I gave them a piece of work, they, they, they made minimal changes. It was always a kind of, yeah, this is real good. Just do this, this, and this. Uh, in, um, to be more in alignment with the brand. Mm-hmm. And um, like when they did that, they made me, again, they made me feel respected. Because again, you have this, you probably have this perception that this person is going to be difficult mm-hmm. because he's the king of soccer. And, and really, he, he's not. Now, that, that's just my experience. <laughs> I don't want to talk for anybody else. But at least for me, through his manager, mm-hmm. Che, and him, Right. I did not find the experience uncomfortable ever. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, you had, had to tighten up. Yeah, of course. It's you had to tighten up. I mean, it's my shit. You have a yeah, brand you had, you had to tighten up. Correct, you had to tighten up. But, yeah, once you tighten up, you're... Yeah. You're inside. Yeah. I would love to have him on the show one of these days. Absolutely. Boy. I hope he sees this and I hope he comes I hope on the show. he does. I would like to ask him, like, that year when he sings Soka King Namji. Like you know, you know the funny thing. What? I was in a lot of his videos. What? Yeah, I was doing Soka King Namji. I'm telling you. You was, you was, you was working with him show. Yeah, that during time? that, yeah, nah. Bro, stuff, I was hey, when Marsha went on the radio with Nikki Cosby and Rudy. And I was, ra- I was on YouTube. Every minute it went live, yet everything during that whole the his concert that year, Marsha Monday that year was hands down one of the best. Mm-hmm. Marsha Mondays I went to. Yeah. And as if I knew I wonder if I was I wonder if I was backstage that year. It's possible. What? You were the, backstage? The, the, what the, the year when French Montana had come down. What year was that? No, that was not wait, that was, no, that was wait. Was it? I can't it was, remember. it was, it was. But I know I, but I know when French was here, I was I was backstage. Okay. Were you here and let me if I could tell you this story, just from the one t- at that one time. Coming on to the end of that particular concert, right? He end of course on Soka King now because it's the song of that year, but he he uh, carry out the drums. You can't even see this clip on YouTube. You have to be in the crowd to mm. actually see. He carry out like the longest drum session. And at the peak of it, it went dark. And mm. the crowd swear the concert was done. And people start walking out the stadium. Mm. And when I tell you, that stage behind us erupted. And Marshall just start. Back the song on the height and the whole crowd went berserk. It was amazing. Yeah. Now it's the dedication to the craft is is undeniable. Facts. It's undeniable. So how was that period in your life working with Marshall? I think it, and you're backstage. Now you're with like two of yeah. these ma- major so Yeah, yeah. It had it had it had its it had its stories. It's, it it was interesting. I mean, I remember a uh, year um Lily Singh was down here, so I, I met Lily Singh. I line with her a little bit. Shout out um, to Superman. Yeah, and Trevor Noah came down that no I year way. too. I get a little picture. No, the funny thing with Trevor Noah, even though I just had like a, a two, three minute conversation with him, nothing very long. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember telling him, I say, hey Trevor, if it's one thing I've always told myself, if I wanted to be famous, it would be along your course and I really appreciate how you carried about yourself and, mm-hmm. and how you stuck to where you believe in. And he's like, yo man, and we took a picture. All right. Um, and I, and I remember making a video after I said, yeah, I was really inspired meeting this guy for like 10 seconds, bro. Because thing. And then I, because Lily Singh was backstage, I had a, I had a friend. She was a huge Lily Singh fan. Mm-hmm. And I was just walking backstage with her. No, there wasn't really a law and run. I was backstage, right? Mm-hmm. But I was like, yo, she, he, there was like, no, 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 this fellow, this fellow. Yeah. And, and I just waltz my friend and let's walk in with confidence. And she had got a picture with Superman. She was like, oh my God, God I can't believe it. Like, so, so the whole thing about, again, using your perks mm-hmm. to make the people they care about happy is one of the biggest things I w- wanted to do because like you know it had a year martial and I'm at a writing camp mm-hmm. and the first person I thought about yo my virgin you know this artist Tedja is, is a great idea Tedja need to be on this writing Mika? camp yeah 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 oh big big right big shout out to Mikael Tedja my she it's like you need to be on this writing camp and that that is what it that is what making it means to me mm-hmm. it means bringing the people they care about with you that that that's what it means and to big me. shout out to you and not to even linking that film well i mean again no i ain't trying to abs- i'm absolutely not trying to say that i you know 
I'm in any way, shape, or form like responsible for anything. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is just that it's our brethren, dog. And if it is our brethren, regardless of, again, whatever the state of the relationship, I want to see people who I care about, even if it's at a point in time. If, if I care about you, once I always care about that, that kind of vibes, I want people, I want, I want them to shine. I get, n- not trying to self glow to anything, but that is just how I would move. And after a while, again, through the lack of vulnerability, there's certain things like I was supposed to go renew my visa, G. I just did not feel to do it. Mm. Even though I knew I would I get back because how what hap- my circumstance was is that I had I actually had US uh, green card mm-hmm. and we gave it up because we didn't have the means to live in the States. And I got a 10 year visa and I, I know if I go to renew, I would I get back. And I just didn't. And when Marsha and them came out from Ghana, they wanted to take me to New York and these different countries and I literally just could not go. Right? Again, Ooh. because I was in such a terrible mental state yeah i could understand that right? too boy. That, uh-huh. no, no, and don't get me wrong it's 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 bad it's not something i should have given into mm-hmm. but i i just didn't feel like i was good enough to deserve to even deserve things like i was real in a sh- okay. so as, state. as we on that because it may have some people who in that position right now like when we like even a younger you are younger me might be in that position and feeling like that what would you have to say for people who feeling like that and trying to get out of that no like, again it's it's about accepting the truth mm-hmm. that you are just hurt not that you're lazy not that you're not working hard enough not that, not that you don't deserve anything or good things shouldn't come to you you need to acknowledge the pain and it's good to to carry out your pain through your story and maybe through your art or your, or your process or whatever i mean adele make millions of dollars because she pushed your pain into an album true <laughs> right but acknowledging so, that pain she that it, it's hard but boy. not just you see not just acknowledging it but also doing the work of finding a healthy way to deal with it <sighs> right and i think that my process just started way after because i i delved into work immediately mm-hmm. because I, i'm an entrepreneur if i don't work i don't eat and I, I am not as, as supportive as my mother is. I am not in a privileged situation where I could just rock back and let my mother take care of me. That, first of all, I find that's wickedness, really and truly. As a man, you can't do that. Yeah, right? dog. I can't nah. be comfortable in a circumstance Mommy like that. Mommy, mine, your dog feel? Yeah, yeah. yeah dog. Yeah. And, and, I, and at that point, I would have already been in my late 20s. So really mm-hmm. and truly. Yeah. Right? And my mother helped me a whole lot because remember, I talk about the injury, I had to go through a lot of physical therapy. Right? right? And that kind of thing. So, and well, it even, was and even get to, it was to your leg, right? Yeah. And even getting back a car was because of my mother, because of her goodwill, the things she did in life. And somebody, because, of she, because she helped somebody, they in turn helped me. First, it was a, like a big favor my mother did for them that mm. kind of catapulted their whole business into a, a successful run. They, they believed that they owed her that much. That they they needed to help me so as well. So it's you. because of her. Right? So um yeah, shout out my mom though. Like I get kinda emotional talking shout about this your because, mommy, because like even though I feel like I try my best you can't pay back your parents, but I feel like I know she proud of me, but I feel like Yeah, and I give her back something to say thank yeah, you. Yeah, dog, I feel like I feel like she's still probably worried about man. I I I I, I wish I, 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 not a wish, I am working to, I am working to make sure that she doesn't have to worry. Because, especially with whatever health issues I had last year, but we ain't gonna get into that. Right. So, fast forward into full time, is the bottom line. Sh- shout out to Marshall's manager. I know you didn't ask this question yet, but I'll just. Mm. Quint it, right? Before I, well, before sure, I shout go out ahead, to go Masha, go Masha, actually, shout out to all the mommies out there, Jed, because even my mom, my mom, mommy, if you're watching this, like, shout out to you, like, all the help she helped me over the years to reach where I am, I, would, I wouldn't be anywhere. Straight, that's I exactly, that's exactly my, my I know what, you know what kills me, just as a segue, there are people who like to, to say this, start from nothing, and, uh, and this, that, and the other, and, 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 and I'm doing it out of the mud, and really and truly, uh, a lot of a lot of people who I know successful literally is because they're living in their parents' house, right? Yeah. So like loud at now. Like be real about where you're I getting signed it. up on three generations I work for me to reach that's, where that's I That's what I'm it. saying. And I'm saying that like I have no problem saying that yeah. because of my mother I got back a car, not on my own. 
Fact. You understand what I'm saying? And it's are people who would be ashamed to say that because it sounds like if you didn't get all the mud and mm. I'm like, bro, that sets up precedence for the youth, that a precedent for the youth for unrealistic expectations that they have to get it on oh, their oh. own. And that's not true for a lot, for most of us. 90% of us did not get it on A oh, no. 100% of us did, did not, not get it on about 90%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> but so you ever notice how like, people don't understand, like people don't think the consideration being in three generations are work is signing up on to reach where you are. Well, at least the start where you get. You had to put in the equivalent of work to build on top of that yeah, and try like and maintain that what they acquire. So yeah, like, like even like if you're living in your parents' house, you still have that house to maintain and extend and get another. No, facts. But the, you point, know what is, I mean? but the point is having a house is an amazing start. True. Can't take away from that. Having a house is an you amazing cannot. start. That is not a common start. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So when people, if a person is in a situation like that where, where their parents left a house for them, I don't think you should be out here saying, yeah, well, I out here, I out here again it on my own now. Nobody never helped me. Like, don't, don't do that. Mm -mm. I, I understand how it sounds. It sounds like you... It sounds have, macho. It sounds like you overcome the uh, um, more than average adversity. And you are a strong person, and you are and you are above average, and you special and thing. But no dog, if your parents left a house for, for you, you, do not tell anybody. You had a better start than ninety. Don't tell anybody that. Ninety percent of us. Don't say, don't us say that dog. <laughs> do not say that. Anyway, yeah. Um, still going to full time. Well, we, we need to reach full time. We need to. <laughs> <at some laughs> <point. laughs> See how I tell it. Yeah, we need to reach full time fly. at some point. We will reach. Um, right. So fast forward. Right. Um, after I started to do work, I I, I did a video. Right. Oh, oh, don't Lauren forget Hill. to shout yeah. out um, Marshall Manager. Correct, Marshall Manager. Chair for linking me to do a video for Miss Lauren Hill. And you need to, that's what she t she says to call her Miss Lauren Hill, by the way. Can't just be saying Lauren Hill. So shout out Lauren to Hill. she and shout out to Miss Lauren Hill. And uh, thanks to the links I made through Destra, mm -hmm. um, one of her one of her um, friends, colleagues, linked me with a video. It linked me with ed an editing job for, for an artist named Monday Justice. Um and good a, a saxophone player i forget his name I, 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 his name will come back to me mm -hmm. and snoop dog right you yeah, know what i'm saying so natty royal is the name natty royal yeah and shout out to snoop dog uh, again uh, so the, f the fact is is that the snoop was in the video <laughs> and um they had to the team had to approve it so it's not a, it's not like snoop dog contact me to do a video <laughs> let me do hype it like that right <laughs> but the bottom line is i did a video right and snoop dog and the team had to approve it. So, hey, I don't have a video for Snoop Dogg. Bottom line, right? And um, after I did all of that, I said, Jared, I'm getting older. I don't want to live with any regrets. Mm -hmm. I need to follow my dream right now. Mm -hmm. So after the pandemic and everything happened, I said, this, this place that I'm, this place that I'm, I'm in right now, mm -hmm. um, it kind of just popped up on the market randomly. I was looking at it for four years prior. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had already means to come here, so whatever. And it popped up. Right. And I was like, I'm coming here because here I can live and do studio work. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, and I, I, I thankfully the owners allowed me. So, okay, well, yeah, you could, you could do your thing. And I was like, you see that? You see what's going on here? I need to start this full-time thing because the full-time name was established before just with a random conversation with a couple of my friends. I was like, what do, we, what do I call something where I want to make a network of content? Yeah, there's something I want to do full-time. That's it. That's it. Think about how proud people feel when they say, yo, we're doing X full-time. We're doing Y full-time. Full I follow my dream full-time. It just is natural. Full-time. And it rules of the tongue. Full-time. So, I just followed my own advice because I remember doing a, a panel talk where somebody was asking, how do you start your dream and form a team? Mm -hmm. And this guy gave this elaborate answer about getting a lawyer and finding a... a, a a graphic artist and this and that. Of course, all these people need to be paid. Mm -hmm. And my answer was, so for the people who can't afford that, <laughs> you probably should just express your dream and perform tasks to scale on social media. And you would see that people who believe in you and have similar vision might reach out to collaborate. And you might form deep friendships because of that. And I took my own advice finally and I said, hey, I want to do a podcast. And I, but I also want to form a network, kind of like a training Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then three people reached out to me. Darren Jacobs, he, who actually was on my podcast. Mm -hmm. Malaika Ali. Now, I knew Malaika for a while back, but we, it was not like if we were the best of friends. Mm -hmm. She messaged me on every possible platform. Instagram, mm -hmm. 
Facebook, usually <laughs> Facebook Messenger, TikTok, everywhere. She's messaging me everywhere. Yeah. And then shout out to Natalia Rupert who um she d- was on the podcast and when I told her about it, she jumped at it. And then what really crystallized it, because mm-hmm. I wasn't really sure if I would do it, is that Mooney Kills, shout out Mooney Kills. I replied to one of her shout videos. Out something, Mo. I replied to one of her videos with one of my videos and apparently it caught her attention mm-hmm. and she reacted to it. And then we just ended up talking. Well, I slide in Monique DM. But thank God she didn't think I was some kind of artist man or something. So shout out Monique for giving me a shot. Yo, shout out Monique and the something Mo show, I think, on yeah. season two right yeah, now. Yeah, we're coming up in season Bruh. two. Right? Big shout out to you, Mo. So, and then we ended up having a meeting, mm-hmm. right? Again, shout out for Green for the meeting, right? Because, I, 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 I mean, fellas online can be creeps, though. True. Right? Very true. So I made sure it was in a public place mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, say we let's go for lunch. Shout and out to you for being a gentleman. Right. Well, yeah, y- you, had, you have to be, dog. You have to navigate your, your circumstances. And, and, of course, it's also who I am. It's not a facade. Mm-hmm. Right? I made sure I was close to our home and uh, thing, thing, thing. And we had a good meeting and, you know, sh- we came to an understanding and we said, okay, we will proceed forward together. And then, coincidentally, Shay... And I, I, I'm going to be real. I can't even remember why I reached out to Shay in the first place. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. But he was doing a, a podcast with, with um, Junior Lee. Shout out Junior Lee. Shout out the test podcast. Yeah, the test. Correct. It was the test podcast. Yeah. And I, I, I thought that what they were doing in the test podcast was good. What, from whatever Phenomenal. form it was taken, I thought it was great, right? It was really And at great. the time, I was also doing something during the pandemic called For His Law, right? Mm-hmm. Where it was me, Taja, and whoever else came into life. Because mm-hmm. at that point, Instagram allowed four people to go into life. That's why we call it For His Law. Right. And that name, <laughs> I'll explain that name another time. And um, I would say, Shay, you know, I want to continue this for us. What's going on with the test? And he's like, well, you know, we, um, JVL pivoting from the test podcast, mm-hmm. right? So I was like, well, hey, if you don't mind, I find your energy is good now. And how JVL described Shay, right? Big up to Shay, that JVL used to say that anytime I did not feel like doing a podcast, Shay would be the one to say, nah, bro, let me do the podcast. And I was like, that's the kind of energy I would need around me. And when I, he was like, yeah. Big shout out to right? Shay the Kuvala Shea. better. Shay was actually the first guest on the video segment of uh, the... South Central Podcast. Yep, well, yeah. He right, was, he right. was a big shout out to Mahomi Shay. Right. And um, I eventually asked um, one other person to join the team, um, mm-hmm. Brendan, or, um, Brendan Alexi. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's how the team was formed. And I'm not going to lie. I am... Um, at, th- at that point in my life, I wouldn't want to say I was isolated, right? Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I was doing everything I wanted to do on my own. Mm-hmm. I have no clue why these people agreed to be part of this team, but they all did with little to no kind of resistance. I didn't have to give no amazing spiel as to why I should join. They just believed in what I could do. And the, and the last member was somebody who reached out to me um, via... TikTok and that was Risa Samuel. Mm-hmm. Big up Reese's pieces. Big up Reese. Because Reese came to me as a kind of she appeared very reserved. Risa? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yes, Re- Risa reserved. And Risa is one of the most talented and big vibrant. personalities. I really vibrant love personalities Risa, I swear. ever. Right? Day one Risa <laughs> and, and day a hundred Risa. <laughs> really? Yeah, now nah, but Risa and I bonded in a big way, but like like I really appreciate I appreciate everyone's friendship. Mm-hmm. Because at, at different phases us working together, I would have bonded with people and really understood who they were. And to be honest, Risa was one of the first I really bonded with mm-hmm. because um don't get me wrong, um you know, I did the first set of videos with, with Monique. Mm-hmm. And of course, me and Monique, you know, connected, but, uh, but it was more on a work level. But we had always had chemistry, right? Right. But, you know, Risa and I, when we, when we met, we, 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 we bonded up because we weren't doing work together. Mm-hmm. We weren't doing work together yet. She was part of the team, yes, but we weren't really working on anything yet. And we just realized we had more in common. And then the bonds with everybody started to, to grow. And I really appreciate these guys. There's a bit of a ramble there because I'm trying to make sure everybody understand that I value them on the same level, right? Like, I really value this everybody. Your people, this your yeah, team, c- uh, correct? They rambling, and, I mean, and, I, and I wouldn't even, and I, I don't even want to say that I'm the, the leader of the team. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even want to use that term because everybody, all of them are leaders in their own right. But 
I would say that the fact that they trust the vision that I have and they would take their brands that they've worked on and put it in my hands, they, they, they really made me feel like I was worth, like my self-worth would have to see it actualized. Not even any way that I wanted to yet because I didn't execute my full plan yet, eh? but make no mistake. I went through, uh, I guess, a personal, I don't want to say crisis. I went through some very personal that kind of hindered me, mm -hmm. but I, I needed to go through it and I'm kind of moving past it now. But they really, they, they really, even if it's just a year, they really are my biggest inspirations right now. And um, It's something different to have a team really behind you, like a solid team. Eh? It's, it's, it's more than that at this point. It's really... I know people like to throw around the word family and stuff like that, but I'm telling you that when we are around each other, when we go out or pe and people see us, they, they feel it because they all say, hey, boy, I really want to, I want to join full-time, but I want to work with full-time. Monique always brings up a, a, a situation where she, one of her guests, shout out Kareem Garrick, he came to the studio a day to do his interview and when he left, he, was, he couldn't stop talking about how inspired he was just being around us. Mm -hmm. And to be in it is inspirational. And I, and, I, and, I, and I'm going, and I know that if I take all these resources and pour it into myself, I'll probably reach real far. But it's not about me just making money or reaching far. It's about showing that community and togetherness mm -hmm. and moving as a unit is the way because it's real individualism now eh? mm -hmm. people will cut people through to, 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 to make go it to make it and that's not the way it's the, about the team making it it's everybody don't, and don't, don't make no mistake eh? mm -hmm. that works the cutthroat undercutting we've seen it work it works and this whole talk about nah down the line ego thing no in this world that a lot of where, especially in our world where people do not call out the kind of behavior no, they will, they will not pay for it down the line. They will succeed more. That's the reality, right? True. My goal is to rehumanize the experience of life and to show that we need each other, dog. And a team of young people who band together, who ex... Because people within the team, even though everybody in the team might be as open as everybody, mm -hmm. but there are people in the team who would have been extremely vulnerable and share their deepest fears and their deepest dreams and their desires and things. And it's like, this is, this is real. It's not, it's not just we coming together to make videos and take some pictures and, and then go back home and not talk. Like, it's real. And that is what we need to foster in the creative mm -hmm. industry. That vulnerability and that notion that we can succeed together and we can make changes together. You know what I mean? Like everybody valuable. And everybody is and every life is valuable, dog. Everybody's contribution can be valuable. And that is the ethos of full time. And that's how we are where we are. So that leader thing and this, you know, don't get me wrong. And they did a birthday video for me that 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 I look at every time I feel down. Mm -hmm. Where they would say, Yo, we are the caption was thank you for following your dreams so that we could follow our dreams. And it's 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 I feel it's money right, it, big man thing. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless of that's clearly how everybody made me feel in the video. Right? So yeah, big respect to the team, bro. Yeah, shout out this the full time year, team, my G. And this year, this year, we coming for we coming for them. Yeah, for sure. facts. They not only this year, this year and for the years to come. No, absolutely, absolutely. But, but they go know this year they go know this year is when they go know us. Prepare to be sick of us. That's that's what I'm trying to say, for sure. I can't wait to see what you will come with, man. Yeah, no. Nah. It's it will it's a process, but we will feel it. I wish I could I wish we could we, I sure we could sit on your hands off even more. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I didn't wanna I didn't wanna No 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 Nah, no, 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 I did not you honestly, honestly you have me I locked in right now, bro. I, I swear really appreciate where that. I locked in. Cause you see, with what you're doing with full time, what are you doing with full time right now? You're, at least from what I see, you're not seeing anybody even having an umbrella creatives that you could first realize the kind of effort, work, 
the Stuart Ross studio, but people come and record and express themselves fully dread. This is an extremely good accomplishment. You're looking to change and revolutionize the creative industry in of itself. Yeah, well, in, 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 we'll get there. I am a, the kind of person I am. I, I, I probably don't give myself enough props. I actually shout out Natalia. <laughs> She's telling me that just yet. She said, you don't give yourself enough credit for your ability to visualize things. Mm-hmm. She said, she said, I don't give myself enough credit as a visionary. And it, it feels uncomfortable for me to even say it because it's like, I, I, I imposter syndrome, I have it bad. I have it, I have it bad. But listen, my goal within the next few months, mm-hmm. no joke from now to December, not in few months, my goal in December is I will, if I had to meditate every day, I need to get rid of this. I need but to acknowledge. What help you improve on the imposter syndrome? No? Um, so my first philosophy is perf- is done is better than perfect. Mm-hmm. What I mean is that okay, Jimmy, you need to get s- things done rather than keep going back and finding an error, finding a, not even an error, sorry, finding a flaw that only I see as a flaw. Because my f- the fa- the favorite thing for my friends to tell me is, well, Jimmy, you might find it bad by telling you it good. That they tell me that all the time. I and would uh, I could always go back to that video I edit and I'd find something I need to change. I'd correct. Find something I need correct. To and I'll Correct. almost never get done if I keep doing that. Correct. So the first thing to deal with imposter syndrome for me is mm-hmm. perfect. Done is better than perfect. You're doing something, try to get done. Try to get finished and put it out, regardless of how you think it is. Put it out. If you are afraid of reactions, that comes from a place of insecurity, and you have to acknowledge that. That your video could be objectively good mm-hmm. and at the very worst acceptable. So st- industry standard acceptable. And you might still think it's bad, and you had to understand that that's just insecurity. That is not you being objective. So you have to call yourself out on that. Hey, self, right now, you're not being objective. You're just being insecure about a reaction you fear may come, a negative reaction. And that, of course, Mm -hmm. then leads me to my next point. Lock into the positive feedback first. Don't get me wrong. You will know proper feedback from dosage feedback. Three, four, five emojis, that's not real feedback. Hey, Jamil, I really like this video. It's positive reaction. Jamil, yo, bro, I find your video. In our, in our face-to-face, I find your video made me feel a particular way. Well done, bro. That. You, you, you will more than likely get more of that than somebody saying, mean like this. But then insecurities will make you focus on that. That mean like this. Rather than somebody who you care about literally telling you, dog, this real good. Or some random stranger telling your dog this real good. I experienced that at least. With Everybody does it. Bro. Everybody does somebody it. Somebody earlier episodes, like when we was just shocking, we forget my, my new mic something. When we, like, even we had Taddy episode on, because you know when it is, you didn't have a cheaper equipment. How, you always have post production trying to edit everything. Mm. And sometimes your audio might be a little bit not as clear as you wanted. And you're studying now, and you're studying the one person who tell you about the audio. Correct. And not the 10 people who tell you, they just laugh at the clip with you and Taddy. Correct. Mm-hmm. So it is be like, yep. I understand where you're coming yep. from, my G. So there's that. And then finally, you have to tell yourself that you're good. You, you just have to. That might sound like overconfidence and ego. But I believe you can tell yourself that you're good. And you can also tell yourself, I am going to continue to work in order to maintain the standard I've set for myself. And recognize that, hey, you deserve the positive outcomes that would reach you by maintaining the standard. So that's really about it. That's the best formula I can give you. For I have in no way, shape, or form mastered it. <laughs> I, but, I'm, but I'm telling you, that's the formula that I see. Sometimes you just feel like you do deserve it. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. No, you're telling me I'm accomplished. <laughs> and I'm like, where? I'm literally sitting down. you you telling me, yo, you are, you are accomplished. And I am sitting here saying, where? <laughs> <laughs> In my head, it's like, what are talking about, dog? <laughs> no, okay, well, how is it? I think we cut there, we still there, we still there. No, we still, we still on, we still on. So, how it is it feel about even performing, like, stand-up? No, because you I had your oh, first performer. Yeah. Oh, my days. Who call him, boy? I lay my ringtone. I give away my age. Cut Um, boy. Because you did perform stand-up, and yeah. I did perish. Drain your set. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, boy, big to big. Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. Huh? 
I did. Oh shoot! I shouldn't probably not have said that. My bad. Why the joke, bro? Really and truly, <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna say I'll never do stand up again, but yeah. I, I knowing me, I'll probably come with our next routine. I enjoyed your set, my G. I find it was I, well. No, I appreciate I appreciate that, right? So I think uh, <laughs> I think that I, I like So satire is where I live, mm-hmm. right? I like parodies. I like I am more comfortable in the in the film space. Mm-hmm. I, I know I could do a real sick, funny video in the film space. Mm-hmm. But um it's because I'm it's because I'm in like all oh, make me do stand up. Every minute is is shit, bro. Jimmy Lee should try stand up, then run. But you'll be real good at stand up. Kwami. Yeah boy, you should try stand up. Like all all the fellas is who make me try stand up. I Shout glad to see you. I glad Shout to see you. Shout out to you. So I'm taking the chain up, right? And I wrote a set. It's probably arguably like it has the next problem. I write a set, the set was long. Mm-hmm. And you know why I write a long set? Because that whole that whole time I'm thinking, but I remember how Chappelle show set was where it was like this long mm-hmm. story and it went to the end. And I wanted to do that and yeah. I probably overstepped my bongs. Say what say, say where it goes. I don't think you overstepped though. Well the thing and in, well the next thing the next important thing to me I remember is that um like the venue wasn't the greatest. It wasn't. Right. So that's what I said. Like if you get I do. I do think if I got a uh, uh, venue uh, where people pay like attention, stages? yeah, I probably would have. I, I would probably would have killed it, G. right? I probably would have killed it, no doubt. But it is what it is. It and, is. And I also recognize that there are certain types of jokes that mm-hmm. do better. That's not necessarily my style. Like I now go on open the show talking about well, hey, well, my tooty real small. No disrespect. Bruh, I, uh, I no disrespect. No, I no, no. That a fellow who make a a, a, tooty, a tooty routine. It has people who could it, do it. It was not. It doesn't. It wasn't by no means bad. Trust I'm me, just Gabriel it's not could me. go on stage and right. talk about that for half an hour, and, and about, it will and be funny, about, and it will be fire. You understand? But that is just that is a little bit I out of my jurisdiction. It's so awkward. Feel no, but it's not even. It's not even awkward. It's just that I I real big on legacy now, bro, mm-hmm. right? And I think that if I make people laugh. It'll be because it, it'll be because the joke hit them and it'd be like, oh, oh my god, rather than going for a, a, a shot that would just be, oh my totally small cat cat because that is funny. Mm-hmm. It is. It just it's, it's all the gate you totally small. That is funny. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I feel like I want to be able to craft a joke that will make you really say, oh, like one of my jokes was, um, one of my jokes was, bro, I I I think I'm trying to be a better person because s- s- some girls told me that I treat them like a girlfriend and then do or no relationship. So one night, this girl came over and of course she had to spend the night because we were talking about our finances, right? Mm-hmm. And um, she's very into physical education. So we were talking about PE, uh, NIS, right? We were talking about NIS. And you had to catch that because if she's into physical education, mm-hmm. so we were talking about PE, physical right. education, NIS because we were talking about my finances, but really I just saying we had sex. That's what that's what that's oh, that's yeah, my yeah, point. Okay, that's okay, my, that's okay, my point. Okay, okay. That's yeah, my that point. actually that actually that actually right. bad. That actually bad. But but it's something that you had to catch. Yeah, you had it really. So I, I, was like, I was like, that's what I'm saying. Oh, even on the, that's yeah. what I'm saying is, is uh, that that is how I want to craft a joke. That's exactly how it hit, even when I was uh, listening to it when he was on stage. Right. And again in presentation, I was like, well, you know, you know, she was we was we was um, you know, we had to be naked because of course we can't discuss finances with clothes on, obviously. So we were, we were, you know, we were talking about how she's really active and in school she liked physical education. So we were talking about PE, NIS, right? We were talking <laughs> about NIS because I was real back on my taxes. And naturally, <clears throat> like, way up, it, it's really penis. But, it, but you see, with you and also, even with daddy delivery, right? You wouldn't get the, you wouldn't get the laugh. Your laugh would come delayed. That, and that's, that I have no problem with that. Right. I want the joke to sink. Right. It's like, some of PE and I, <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind that. And that was just one of the jokes that would have taken a while to reach. But again, that 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 is how my sketches work as well. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, in one of my sketches, um, I said um the I was talking about I was doing a parody about grass, mm-hmm. right? Because you know it had a big racist explosion at the time. Grass a la grass was the name of this parody. I was cooking grass basically, and I said, t- and I said, guys, um, well, the butter we're using specifically is sunflower and a chuckle, right? But if you deep it, is usually it was mostly people who were upset that UNC lost the relax- election, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> UNC symbols is the rising sun, mm-hmm. sunflower butter. That's the link. But not everybody going to pick up on which that. is fine, which which is fine because I want my work to be critiqued in depth. So that you will pick up and say, "Wish this is what he we meant. Mean. This is what he meant." Like a Lupe album. I want you to 
think, even though you're getting the entertainment, I still want my entertainment to make you think. When I said you need to slice the grass evenly so it's the same on both sides, that's not how racism yeah. works. Racism is never the same on both okay. sides. But as he kicks in anything, I even had a light bulb in, um, in, the, in my list of ingredients. It was a light bulb right there because everybody's complaining about where the LED bulbs and it had an LED bulb right on the counter and people didn't even see it. But that's the whole point with, with how I tell stories. Mm. You get to go back and discover something new. So again, in my stand-up, I would like say P-E, album. I would say P-E, N-I-S. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, then was talking about P-E and N-I. Wait. You know what uh, I mean? So, which is fine. And maybe that might not work in Trinidad. Who knows? I don't think it may not work. I just think it depends on the crowd. Because, okay, if you tell that to, like, a, a Vala audience who eating and it's a blender going off and it's a... Oh, like, Bato going on, yeah, going they on. Catch it because that, they're not paying attention. Exactly. Right. But if you tell that to a crowd who locking in onto you and your words on the stage and your delivery, because when we are saying on in Olympus, I see you on the stage, but I'm not a part of that crowd that going on anywhere. I lock in like I lock into a theater performance. So when I watch in there, I'm like, bruh, you are good, my G. I appreciate that. You're real gassing, man. I, appreciate I don't that. gas in there telling you, you are good. But you're going for the for the average person to really catch where it is you're on, they would not catch it in a current environment. It had to be theater though. It had to be somewhere where you're lucky into that story you're telling. Fair enough. All right. And like for me, I don't know you do you know um Ali Sadiq, the comedian? No, nah, not familiar. I would like if you get a chance, you could check out his um specials, Domino Effect one and two. Oh no, uh, no, 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 no. Bro, I told you talking about somebody locally. Yeah, I know I know where you're talking about. Uh, you know what I talking about. <laughs> I, my mind went dead there. I know yeah, where you're talking about. Yeah, but Ali said the if I could like I want I just re I really admire the storytellers like Paul King Douglas, mm -hmm. Richard Pryor. Like yeah, Paul King Douglas, Richard Pryor, I would say Bernie Mac to an extent, but he just uh, these are a little bit more different. But like, especially Ali or like yeah. Joey Diaz, like yeah. how they just tell stories. Like Ali would be on stage, he'd be telling a story. He would have his punchlines, but he could even draw out. Is the first time like in Domino Effect too. He could be bring the audience almost to tears. Mm. Like the emotion he himself break down on the stage and show that vulnerability mm -hmm. of explaining a situation that he was in with his sister. And then, like, it was so masterful. He come with a punchline right in the midst of dead silence and had the crowd laughing. And yeah. That, that, uh, that level of mm. storytelling to and, and, you need, and you need people to pay attention yes. in order to get that effect. Exactly. Because you can't get that dead silence unless... You yeah. can't. You can't do that in a crowd. Yeah, so, like, crowd how I does perform? Bruh, I yeah. love that type of comedy, my G. Yo, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of the Salt and Jeff Podcast. This has been episode number 14. And I'm here with Jay Revolution. I'll give a round of applause to Jay one more time for coming on. Brother. I wonder if I have a clap sound effect on this, boy. Yo, thank you very much for having Jay, thank you very much for having me on the show, my G. Really? No, are you, I don't, you, you know, I'm not having you on the show. Oh, <laughs> And the person said, hey, leave this in, man. <laughs> we have to. Thank you for being on the show, man. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. the support to the platform. And yeah, absolutely, bro. Anytime, anytime, even if it's not me, anytime you feel like you want to, if you want to, if you have a situation where you need a place, bro, you yeah. can come through, brother. Thank That's you, bro. man. Thank you. I appreciate the extent of the offer, my dog. And to everybody on the full-time team, y'all, great, great, great work you're putting out. This has been the 14th episode of the South Central Podcast. I am your host, Ron Austin. Make sure to follow J Revolution on all the social media as well as full-time. Follow my boy Malik in the back, a legend in of himself. Oh, Malik, see you Now, part, part of the full-time team too. Oh, yeah, just, uh, Malik is part of the team too. Exactly. So, y'all, thank you very much. And this has been another episode. See y'all later. We out.